Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content process and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is content management. A key part of this special certification, which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module discusses the information lifecycle and considerations relating to content reuse. It is part of the Capture and Manage Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program. A big part of the challenge is that much of your information needs to be managed from the time it's created until the time it can be disposed of, according to the rules and policies of your organization. You see, content management is not just about creation, or retrieval, or maintaining an archive for a year or a decade or a millennium. It encompasses the entire life cycle of content, from the beginning to the end according to the business uses and objectives to which that content is to contribute. How this gets done is something of a moving target because information itself can change forms during the course of its life. For example, a credit card application filled in and returned on paper may be scanned immediately upon its return to the issuing organization, thus changing it from hard copy to electronic. And then, the choice as to which electronic format has to be made according to the dictates of the business process that then ensues and whether it needs to be annotated, approved, signed, etc., and for how long it needs to be stored. One variation on this theme has to do with the notion of reuse, which is to say the delivery of the same content in different forms and formats according to context, viewing device, and security. Imagine, for example, the common case of a commuter reading the New York Times on an iPad or other tablet while on the train, and in printed form upon arriving home. The content is largely the same, but the experience is wholly different, and the technology behind the scenes is not for the faint of heart, as the same stories and images are assembled and reassembled to maximize the look, feel, features, and usability of the medium being used. And this is to say nothing of customizing the content according to geography, say, to feature stories deemed to be more pertinent to the commuter's location as determined by the device's geolocation ability or the subscription address for the print edition. And then there's the ability to present premium content, or sensitive corporate information, in a workplace setting, on the fly according to the viewer's access credentials, or to edit or redact it with the same qualifiers in mind. So you see, there's a great utility associated with reuse, and content management tools can help make it a reality. This module has discussed the information lifecycle and considerations relating to content reuse. Next, you may wish to review the module on considerations for file format selection and use. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.